It's that time again. That's right. Fedora 35 is out in beta. How nice is that? And as you can see, beta, beta, they're both right there. And there is the one that we want, which is the workstation version. And we're going to hit download now. And it's 1.2. Now, I've already been running 1.2 for about a good solid week now on actual real live hardware. But I just wanted to show you how to download it for now. But we will be booting into, you know, my live hardware uh, in just a second once I'm able to find the SSD that it's on. Because if you're like me and you have a ton of SSDs, then finding the proper one is a bit difficult. Found it. I, did I just say that was difficult? My bad. So... I want to go over the installation first on VMware, and then we're going to go over to real hardware, and I'm going to show you what's different. Now, Dash to Dock does have a... No, I can't spoil it. We'll have to wait till we get to the desktop for that one, won't we? <sighs> so just give me a second, shall you? <sighs> All right, the point being is it's done downloading, and we should be able to have some fun here in a second. Here we go. So, I can't get this into UEFI mode. I don't know, for some stubborn reason, VMware is all like, you don't get to have what you like most. Instead, you're going to take what we give you. All right, so we're at the desktop, and believe it or not, we can actually full screen, and the resolution automatically adapts. Of course, our cursor's not on, which I just realized. So here, now you can see. So you can install the hard drive, which is this button. And it's going to take a second to, of course, start up the installer, because it always does. Uh, Say mold Fedora's installer, you know, as usual, until you get to uh, most points. So we're going to hit done. Uh, the last time I set up the installer, I had the ability to actually enter my credentials and stuff. But it's not letting me do it this time. So there's the installation. Pretty easy, right? We're going to jump over to real hardware, and I'm going to show you what I did with the desktop environment. Then we're going to go over what's new. So we're on the Fedora 35 beta desktop, and we're going to start off with what's new. Uh, because that's what we're here about, right? So we got this pretty new logo. It's not actually new. It was in Fedora 34 eventually. Uh, we are on GNOME 41. Spooky. Not really. It's just October. And... But there's not much new besides that in the kernel. Uh, we have this, which allows us to switch between balanced and power saving. There's supposed to be a performance mode, but it's missing. Great. Um, there's really not really that much new besides that. That's the, that's the sad part. There's a, lots of optimizations with GNOME 41. So let's try to find out some other new stuff. Um, so Fedora's third-party repositories also include improved access to Flatpak and Flathub. That's great. That is pretty great. Uh, so people are, for some reason, being all like, hey, that means Zoom, Minecraft, and Bitwarden. Minecraft. Did it just say Minecraft? No way. Hey, there's the Bedrock launcher, too. Nice. That means I can play with my kids on Linux. Um, what else do we have here? Fedora Desktop also includes power profiles. So yeah, there's supposed to be system performance or battery life. Nice. Uh, don't like GNOME, no problem. Fedora also comes with numerous desktop spins. We all know this, right? Um, cloud images and hybrid BIOS UEFI support. Interesting. And other stuff like Python 3.10, Firewalled 1.0.0, LLVM 13. Uh, what else is here? The 5.14 kernel and Fedora, it is now supports DNS over TLS. This means when using DNS servers that support TLS, your network will be more secure. All right, so it's more secure against you know, uh, what is it called? DDoSing. 
I don't believe it, but hey, if they say it's true. So yeah, it looks like the cloud images will use ButterFS. That's pretty good. And other than that, there's not really much here to go on about. Unless, you know, they drop in more features as it goes by. Uh, yes, I do have my NVIDIA drivers working. Uh, we're on the newest Wayland drivers, and they do work pretty well. Uh, let's check this Minecraft out, though. And I'm also going to want this one because kids. If you have kids, you'll understand. We're going to install those both. Now, I have been playing some games on this. I believe I have been. Do I have Lutris in here? I do. And I've been playing Guild Wars 2. I did try iTunes. Forgive me. I like Apple Music. But I've been playing Guild Wars 2, and the performance has been freaking amazing. And ever since they've switched to DirectX 11, uh, the performance has even been more amazing on Linux than it is with DirectX 9. DirectX 9 sort of held the engine that they have, the some weird hybrid between Unreal Engine 3 and some Havoc engine. I don't know. It's just it's just a messy, messy engine, right? But it's been good with DirectX 11. There's been minor graphical issues, shader issues, so on. But they don't exist in DXVK, but they do exist without DXVK, which is just like, huh? How? <laughs> now, what I want to see happen is with balanced, I want that performance mode. But we got power settings here. So you can see my wireless gaming mouse, which I no longer use, is like, hey, I'm half dead. Fill me up with new batteries there, eh? And automatic suspend, all that's there. Right? But where's my performance mode, guys? You're lacking, you're slacking. So let's give this a go. The performance is going to suck because I am using CPU rendering because, I don't know, there's some weird thing going on with uh, NVDAC and this version of Fedora. I, I will have to check to see if, um, what do you call it, works, Discord. Because the Discord version from RPM did not work. So I'm going to update that and see what happens. Loading shaders. Don't mind me. Let's see the performance. This is a heavy area. Okay. Let's freaking go back to NATO on that one. Actually, I don't like depth floor anymore. Yeah, so without F Sync, uh, we do have a performance loss in this area. Other than that, we're not actually doing too well here because it is unbalanced. And we do not have our overclock enabled in our BIOS, so that's something. Anyway, whatever. We don't really need to have any of that up. All right. So besides that, you know, Fedora 35 is sort of a, a meh release. But hopefully Fedora 36 is going to offer a lot more changes. Uh, I would like to see actual full integration of the Arc menu. This is the Windows 11 type theme going on. And to have Dash to Dock completely built in. Uh, the clock should be over here. And honestly, they should start doing their own custom desktop environment type look. Uh, because it would just be far better than forcing everybody to be on. Well, how I turn them all off. this because this is not this does not look good at all so yeah i wouldn't mind at all if they started doing their own thing uh you know kind of like how pop os is doing their own thing because this looks sleek as hell i mean this looks beautiful i could be on this desktop environment all day and with that, guys, I'm off. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, share the video, and I will see you guys in the next one. I guess we'll check out the new Ubuntu beta to see what's going on that's new there. And um, I don't know, maybe it's all good, maybe it's all bad, who knows? Because when it comes to Ubuntu, things are stupidly outdated. But 
that might change. Who knows? Bye, guys.